Welcome to the tutorial drawing using the pencil tool. So in this tutorial we're going to take a look at the new properties of the pencil tool. And to do this we're going to make a clean trace of our Karate Rabbit sketch. So if we look down at the timeline we can see we have a rabbit sketch layer which is locked and that's why it's indicated in red. And if we click on it we can scroll across to see that we have a front three-quarter profile and profile or side view. So to do the trace, I've created a rabbit clean layer and we'll just move our playhead across to the first frame. So let's go to the drawing view and if we use the, the light table, we can see our sketch underneath. So I'm just going to zoom in a little bit and get a good angle for tracing the rabbit. So now not only can the pencil tool make uniformly thick lines, but it can also make lines that taper. So lines that go from thin to thick or from thick to thin. So if we start tracing the Karate Rabbit, you'll see what I mean. Okay, so maybe that isn't obvious enough, so let's um, actually increase our maximum width to 30. And if you find as you're drawing, if you don't find the line thick enough, you can hold down the keyboard shortcut O to increase or decrease the maximum tip of the pencil tool. So if I release here, you can see that it got quite big now at 76. Um, I can go back and actually shrink it once more and make it 19. And if you want to increase or decrease the minimum pencil tip, so this right here, um, you just have to use shift along with O. And then what I'm seeing now is the contour of the minimum tip, so I can make it even smaller, for example. So once again, you can always use the select tool to transform any of your lines. So to skew, rotate, uh, scale, etc. So you can always nudge things more into place if you want using the select tool. So I'm just going to use the keyboard shortcut Alt-Y to go back to the pencil tool. And then what we're going to do is take a look at the new options in the tool properties panel for the pencil tool. So the first one we're going to take a look at is the auto gap close. So I'm going to click on that. So if I'm trying to make a shape such as a circle for example, I might come close to the end of my line but not complete it and sometimes it's less obvious than this so it might be a very minuscule gap um, that you might not be able to see but that will affect your character when it comes time to be able to paint because as you know you can only paint closed zones. So let's use the keyboard shortcut D to show all strokes. But with the auto close gap as you approach the tip of a circle it actually finishes the circle for you. Um, it'll join the vector line so even if there is stylistically a gap or it might just be a mistake for example uh, the contour line will get finished for you and obviously it depends how close the two endpoints are because these two apparently were not close enough to have a finishing line but this one was. Um, if you want to actually have the line finish and have the pencil line continue what you can do is hold down the alt key as we return to the beginning of our pencil line and I'm just going to zoom in to show you what I mean. So I forgot to mention that it's actually Alt on Windows or Linux, um, but that it's Command on Mac. So as I'm drawing my circle, I'm coming around to the end, I'm about here, and I hold down the Command key and I release, you can see that even without bringing my pencil uh, to connect with the other end, the pencil line just shot forward and connected automatically. So this is a pretty useful a shortcut to use in combination with the auto gap close tool if you're really worried about ever having any gaps. So using this method will guarantee no gaps uh, or no visible gaps between the lines. So the next option that we're going to look at is the line building mode. So if we click on this and I'm going to uh, reset my view So I'm just going to change the values here to get a more defined taper. Okay, so what the line building tool essentially does is it merges several 
broken or segmented lines together. So for example, if I start sketching around the rabbit's face, you'll notice that even though I drew four distinct line segments, they now look like a single solid line with a single central vector. So let me show you what that looks like if I did not have the line building mode on. So as you see here, these four segments would remain as four separate segments, each with their own central vector line. So let me just redraw that one more time. So when using the line building tool, you have to be careful because you should only use it in instances where you do want to merge and blend your lines. For example, you might not want to merge your lines for the mouth. You might draw one line here and then one line here, um, but the moment that you draw the teeth, you'll see that the center line for your mouth disappeared. So you could turn that off and try again. So you'll notice in this situation where you have the close gap tool on, you may run into some other problems. If we zoom in, you can see that Instead of having these become individual strokes, your line was constantly trying to close gaps. So here where I drew one stroke, a connection was made somewhere else on the central mouth line, and that's the same for the teeth. Um, this isn't such a huge deal. You can always use the cutter tool to then cut these segments to cut them away. But in this instance, we did want to keep, for example, this part of the mouth. Um, you can do that once again for this to get rid of these extra lines, but it works for the top of the teeth, but not necessarily for the mouth because we did want to keep that small line that represents the cheek. And what I'm using here with the cutter tool is the use mouse gesture cutter mode, and that's how I'm able to cut away these extra lines that we don't need. So I'm just going to select these and delete. So in this instance, we wanted neither the auto gap nor the line building mode on to draw the mouth. So something like that. The next mode I'd like to talk to you about is the auto adjust thickness, which is this next button here. So if we press that, you'll see that the color swatch here becomes enabled. So what this option does is it allows you to pass your brush over a pencil line and thicken it by the number of strokes that you pass over that line. So as you can see, the width of this has increased. Um, you can also hold down shift to do the opposite, to, to make the line thinner or have it decrease in width. And if, for example, if you had some colors in the way um, of seeing this brush stroke, such as if your lines here were brown or, uh, you know, if there's some background elements or whatever, you could always click on the swatch here and then choose a different color for this brush. So the next option is actually quite similar, the line pushing mode. Um, you can once again use the color swatch to change the color of your brush. And what this does is instead of thickening or thinning the lines, it actually pushes the lines. So let's zoom in on this eyeball right here. If I hit the contour edge of this line, so not the central vector, uh, like what I was doing over here with the auto adjust thicken, um, I'm actually trying to hit the boundaries. And the greater the sweep, the more progressive that uh, push is. Whereas if I go perpendicular, I can have a very pointy push like that. The force of the push is also dependent on the brush size. So if we zoom out a bit, you'll notice that as I push, it's actually not too bad in this case, you can still see it morph a bit, but if I actually change my brush size to something quite a bit larger and do the same push, you get an even greater force. So both the auto adjust thicken and the pushing line mode both work much faster than if you moved around the bezier points using the contour editor tool. So that's it for the tutorial, drawing using the pencil tool. Stay tuned for the next tutorial, Pencil Templates.